Today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint the armor on this Dark Angel and yes, those edge highlights are done with 100% dry brushing. Welcome to another Artist Opus video. We have a Dark Angel, hotly requested. Uh, this is a super adaptable technique. Today I'm using contrast paints and dry brushing and yeah, as I said already, those edge highlights are done just with the dry brush. So using some really specific techniques here, we've dropped down, we're using the smaller brushes and there is one stage which you can use to customize your model entirely, whether you want a darker dark angel or a lighter one, or you want to take this and apply it to a salamander or just take the technique in general and apply it to any space room, whether that be green, blue, yellow, whatever. So uh, the keystones of this are a weird base coat where we've mixed in purple and then the one thing that you can change is there's a wash stage where you can either use a green a super dark green even a black or a purple and all of those will help you achieve a super like uh, varied result and then you just finish it and do the details and you've got a customized dark angel in whichever way you'd like so if you like the video please give it a like please hit that subscribe button it really does mean a lot to us we are approaching 20,000 subs that is super exciting do expect a giveaway when we hit that 20k and if you've got any comments or suggestions do pop them down below we'll take all of them on board they really do uh keep us going and they really inform our future content all right as per normal uh we have our space marine here all of his parts have been pressed on they've not been glued on backpack arms and the head is on a stick this is all to make um painting things separately a little bit easier so if for example we wanted to be able to get to that helmet there we can just take the arm off to get better access at it, that type of thing. It will make your job a lot easier with the painting. Time for the first step. Now you can do this with an airbrush or you can do it with a normal brush um, or you can do it with a dry brush. So how I'm gonna be base coating this guy is with a kind of smooshing, stippling or however you wanna put it here. Um, it doesn't matter how you do this, just make sure that you get good all over coverage. So rather than approaching it with the normal um, kind of Calibran green, what we're actually doing here it was we're mixing Nagaroth Knight, which is a very dark purple, with Warpstone, which is going to be one of our highlight colours, and that is mixing us up a, a kind of a very, very deep, uh, slightly cooler version of the green that we'll be using on the rest of the model. So to get a decent base coat with stippling uh, is pretty much as you'd expect. You can combine it with stippling and smushing and uh, just make sure you get all of the model. You don't want to be getting it with too thick a coat and any areas that have been missed with your priming and the recesses, it's really, really important to fill those in, especially on these guys, because otherwise you'll end up with blue recesses. That makes no sense whatsoever. If you are using uh, a brush brush, do feel free to kind of uh, pull the bits off in order to be able to get into the recesses. It is a really important part to make sure that there aren't any weird colors going on there in the shadows, because it, it doesn't help kind of a paint scheme's overall impression if you've got blue bits in particular poking through. Now I'm using a small here because we're looking to be pretty precise. I'm also jumping up quite aggressively in color. The reason for that is that with this, uh, we're gonna be using quite an aggressive dark wash. Um, a lot of you are probably gonna be fairly familiar with the Games Workshop take on it, uh, using Bada Black or other pretty strong colors like that to kind of uh, keep, the, keep the Dark Angels in the lower, deeper end of the green spectrum. I am doing a very general, pretty soft um, in terms of the pressure uh, all over dry brush with the moot green on this guy. Now we're looking to hit pretty much every single part of it and don't uh, it's dry brushing rather than stippling and we're just looking to buff this right up. Now interestingly this next step which I'm using a huge wash brush for which is our size 4 um, you could use pretty much anything here. I know that sounds weird but you could be using a purple at this stage, you could be using a black you could be using a dark green like I am, I'm literally using Dark Angel's green. You could mix another contrast like Orc Flesh with the purple. Um, it really doesn't matter too much. You're basically looking to darken what you've done already. So black, uh, green or purple, all of those would work absolutely perfectly. And um, whatever you do, it doesn't matter particularly what it does on the raised areas, it's more what it does to the recesses because we are going to be giving this a, uh, another stage. So I've got some medium and some Dark Angels Green here. If you do have Dark Angels Green, you've probably got something that looks like that. Really do shake it a lot. It separates quite heavily. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm putting down a pretty thin layer. You can see I've already tested it on another one of his legs. I'm putting down a pretty thin layer of the contrast paint. So what I tend to do is start somewhere, 
where it goes on quite heavily. I work pretty fast. I always drag it towards the recesses and then I will use that point of the model as kind of my palette basically and remove it until I'm happy with the amount that is in that one area. If you want them darker and more desaturated, add in a little bit of black or even use black. If you want them more vibrant, use purple or add in some purple. And if you want them true straight green, then you've got Dark Angels Green or any other washes. So we've actually given this guy two of the previous steps, two of those coats all over. We want to be careful here because this and the salamander scheme are actually very, very close to each other. So our edging uh, is where we're going to be concentrating this green, which is the only green we've used so far. And as a result, I'm removing quite a lot of it. And this is going to be a very soft, specific and delicate application of it. So you're only really looking to hit the edges, but it should be very, very easy given how dark the base is that you're working from. So hopefully you can see here, just gently buffing it. Every single edge, I'm going to be across, not up and down. And that should give me a pretty decent amount of control. Okay, so we're moving on to the next step. <laughs> we are about to add in moot green to what we're doing here. We've just been concentrating on these edges for that Dark Angels feel. And obviously moot green is quite a big step up from warp stone. So what we're going to be doing is taking a little of each, mix them carefully together, testing them. Very important. We don't want excess of any of this. And then these points here are going to be concentrated on basically edge highlighting our edge highlights. So you can concentrate them towards edges. Uh, you could hit every edge. It's entirely up to you exactly what approach you want to go for with this. If you have a rounded area like the top of this knee pad, you could just be hitting the top bit that would be catching the, uh, the light like I'm doing here. All up to you. Now what this will do is um, just by merit of being next to something this bright, also feel free to pop your mini off the base if that makes it easier to catch toes and stuff like that. All right, so we are at the stage where we're gonna be using pure moot green or um, semi-pure if we're using a brush that we've previously had the warp stone glow on. I, however, am gonna to jump to our extra small, which is our teeny tiny dry brush. And the reason for doing that is uh, you have the option to highlight sections within a section on these edges. So if we take this knee for an example, I've already done this a little bit. I'm using the light from my lamp to suggest where I should be highlighting here. And that is going to dictate where these precise edge highlights go. Only looking for edges, not looking for buffing panels or anything like that. It's up to you. You can cover all of the areas in Moot Green. Um, absolutely fine. No downside to doing that. I'm going to try and be a little bit more specific. So areas kind of like this gorget here or whatever, um, I can choose to pick uh, just the central section. Okay, so on to detailing. I've got some of the Dark Angels green contrast. I've mixed in a little bit of Vallejo 950 black. And for one of our detailing steps, and this is, this is completely optional, it's just a little bit of icing on the cake as far as contrast is concerned. Um, I am going to be taking my brush and just running it down the recesses with this mix involved. This is just going to give us some harder contrast against those edge highlights and keep the recesses shaded. And there's a couple of areas where you have little panel details or whatever and just get a little bit of a high level of contrast on. Now, if your guy's got a helmet, obviously this uh, isn't required, but uh, this guy's unhelmeted and I get told off when I give my guy a helmet on the belt and a helmet on his head. I, um, I'm not a massive fan of uh, fleshy heads on Space Marines, but let's see how this goes. So. What I've got here is a mix of Word Bearer's Red and Screaming Skull as my base coat. And then I'm just going to be using Screaming Skull from above for my second step. There we go. Now a couple of washes and a little bit of highlighting and he'll be good. I've got Word Bearer's Red on my palette. I'm going to grab a little bit of Lamy Medium. You can use whatever medium you like though. If you don't have an airbrush, I just mix a higher proportion of Screaming Skull in for your first coat and get a nice flat base coat on this. It is the wash that is going to kind of push the contrast on this. A little bit too much there, but as normal, what we can do is the area where we first had our wash, we can pull from that. And 
And then while the wash is drying, we've got a fair bit of time with a Lamy medium. Go in there, clean our brush and remove and kind of redistribute our wash as we see fit. And then it's just a matter of highlighting with Screaming Skull with a little bit of the brown mixed in and then pure Screaming Skull and we're good. I thought I would pick up here for the detailing stages. Everything has just been given a flat coat. Um, the silver is Vallejo Game Air Silver plus Vallejo 950 Black. That's a favorite combo of mine. You can see it mixed here into the palette. Rather than using a darker silver, I just use a really good silver and make it darker. And then we've used these three for the details. Um, those have all been washed. Um, the gold has been washed with the word there as red. Now the reason for that is I want to take it down, but I also want to keep it super warm and I really want the gold to be a, 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 a proper central attention grabber within the middle of this model. The gold has been dotted around. We've got it on the eagle, um, the skull and the bullet. Uh, it's on his helmet here, stuff like that. So there's a nice spread of gold around the model. And then details wise, the only other color that's been used is screaming skull here. So let's rock on with the detailing. I'm going to be using a double zero S here. You can see I've got a special that I use for metallics and uh, let's, uh, let's get on with this insignia on his chest plate. Okay, so for the first highlight, I'm just gonna be using a little retributor plus a tiny touch of our silver. Now the silver is an incredibly potent metallic. It is completely overpowering. So if you want something that looks like it's 50-50, you're probably gonna have to use maybe even four parts gold to one part silver just to get something that kind of approximately looks even close to that. Now with details like this, the angle's really important. So I've removed his arms because they're just gonna get in the way. You could just give these a uh, retributor base coat and then a quick wash, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna spend a little bit of extra time on them because it's such a uh, central bright, potential kind of uh, eye-catching part of the piece I think it's worth spending the extra time on. So I'll show you on these wings uh, the full sequence of what I'm gonna do. So they've all been hit with that mix. And obviously if his hand was here, I'd be really struggling to get this angle, but his hand isn't there, so we're good. Wash off the brush, and now I'm gonna take a higher percentage of the silver. Mix that in. And then I'll be popping this on the kind of bottom edges of these wings. So having done that, we're gonna to jump to pure silver, which really will look very bright in comparison. And just get the very ends of these. Now we want these to look like they are gold, not silver. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sneaking in there with a little bit of a wash and that's gonna pull everything back. So step one with this is to repeat our word bearers red. You could use a doom ball brown or something else that's kind of closer to gold here if you want it. The only reason that I've got for using this is it's being used elsewhere on the model. And then again, using exactly the same brush, I'm gonna start my strokes in the middle of the wings and I'm gonna end them where I want things to be darkest. There we go. I said we were gonna be doing some, some cheaty hacking with this. This is Cassandora Yellow, which is a extremely warm, vibrant paint. And it is a fantastic way to turn silver into gold. So I've just got a small amount of that. And we're gonna use it to bring up our gold. Now you can do this before shading the recesses if you like. Um, it's entirely up to you and you can dilute it as much as you want. But if you do want a incredibly gold gold, this is one of the best ways to get it fast. And particularly if you've highlighted and you think you've highlighted your, your gold up to silver too much, this is a really efficient way just to be able to pull it back and put it back into the spectrum where you want it to be, to be truly gold. That is gonna stand out though. You cannot miss that on that model.
Okay, so we're at the joyful part of the video where you get to watch me struggling to paint eyes. I know everyone loves this. So just for something a little bit different, I'm gonna grab a bit of a blue. I'm using a Harriman here, but it doesn't matter too much. I've already given these kind of a, uh, a base coat of the whites. I've just used the bone for that. I don't like it when they're pure white because I don't feel that I'm amazing at eyes at this size. So I don't want to draw too much attention to them. Uh, but also that, that white white does stand out a little bit too much for my liking. So test my brush on my hand and then let's see how we can go here. Okay, now they may not look great, but what I'm gonna be doing is my secret trick of deleting my mistakes around the edge. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of word bearers, mix up a little bit of a wash, and then those bits where we went over it towards the top, we're just gonna delete. No one ever needs to know how badly they turned out then we have here are slightly more acceptable eyes. Our Space Marine has been taken off his stick, well his head has at any rate. I've just finished off his hair with a bit of Wild Wider Red want to make sure he's nice and pale and then now is the very important part where I pick his facing. Um, he's got a pointing finger which kind of it takes it out of your hands uh, a little bit more what he's doing but he can be looking in a different direction to the one that he's facing. Things that I'm considering are like do I want the angle that he's facing at, which is generally where people will be looking at him from to uh, show off his weapon or not? Do I want it to be going exactly in the same direction as the finger? In which case we can have kind of a really cohesive final feel. Um, I do like how things look side on with the weapon, but equally I like his, uh, I like his very, very gold fronting. So I get him there, make sure he's looking down his nose a little bit, not quite that aggressively at whoever he's looking at nice and imperious and that's what we're going for. I do like to have a kind of a focal point and a direction that our guys are looking in. Now for basing I'm going to be using exactly the same method that I used recently on our Black Templar. This is Scrag Brown and Word Bearers Red. I've put them neat onto an Agrella nerfed base and then I'm just using a wet brush to fade in between them. Now the important thing with this is to make sure that you go right up to the edge. Obviously don't use your favorite brush for this. This is a pretty uh, a pretty rough and ready technique and I've got a very very sad ancient size 3 that is reserved for uh, for this type of task. Now as for the dry brushing we've done quite a thick layer there it's up to you how much water you involve in the process um, you can have it look uh, kind of like it's been more muddy or more arid and dry totally up to you I'm just using a medium here and I'm doing a quick dry brush of the scrag which you won't be able to notice too much because there's so much of it in our base coat but then from that, I'm swiftly moving through to Fire Dragon Bright. I'm not using my dry brush in any particular direction here. It's definitely much more of a buffing motion. And the reason for that is it's the ground. I, like I'm not simulating a light source or shadows or anything like that. It's all being hit from above in my head. So everything is just going to be highlighted kind of regardless. And then quickly we're moving through to the Screaming Skull that we still have on our palette. Work off the excess of that. And then that will really allow us to kind of pick up on these details and give us a lovely effect super quick. Now we've got the black base room drying. Our guy's looking pretty sweet. As ever, we've got a couple of very important steps just to time with the base. So I'm going to take a couple of our browns. This is the majority scrag brown here. I'll wash it down quite a lot, mixed a little bit with our word bearers red mix and very, very carefully we're going to use that to tie him in with his base. Now you can do this as much or as little as you like. I do think you should always do it a bit. Even if he has dropped like fresh out of his drop pod, there is going to be some of his new planetary environment uh, working its way up his legs or dust or whatever. And I think it works absolute wonders for just making sure that your guy makes sense uh, as a model in the environment he's in. So. I'll do a little bit with this mix and then after I've done that kind of everywhere, working up to wherever you like, it's up to you how far you take it up his legs or his body. Once that's been done, 
I'm gonna jump in with the Scrag Brown and then a tiny bit of Scrag Brown and the Fire Dragon Bright and just kind of uh, dot it around in little bits and kind of highlight my highlights as far as the weathering goes. But it's a really important step and it does go a massive way to ensuring that your model makes sense in uh, whatever environment that you've based in. We are going for transfers. Now, if your transfers don't go perfectly or they tear a little bit or something like that, don't despair. Putting them on as a guideline is just as good as having them on elsewhere. So what I'm doing here is I've got some of our Dark Angels green contrast and I've also got some white. Um, it's not a DW white. Um, use a non-DW white to get the, uh, the whitest of whites if you are trying to fix a transfer. And any bits where the transfer is kind of flecked off, which you can see here, you can actually just fade in. So what I'm gonna do is all the way around this transfer, I'm gonna swiftly glaze this on and then those little wrinkles um, or lighter sections or bits where the transfer my transfer did actually rip and it put some little white bits around it I can quickly go around and basically um, fix my mistakes I've put a matte varnish on before doing this process just to protect what's there and then with this little double zero I've got plenty of control and I can basically go around and kind of mitigate my mistakes that I've made. I had a rip here. Let's see if I can. Just, and I've actually, um, rather than kind of giving up, uh, the transfer went fairly well. So I've got some white on my palette. And what you can do is go on, and if you see where I've gone over the sides of it with the wash, you can go and fix our mistakes there. And this is so much easier with something down as a guideline. There we go. Okay, here we go. So we ended up cheating and using a transfer. Came out all right though. And we've got our little tips for kind of customizing those. Super effective paint job. Uh, as I've stressed many times, you can change this however you like using a black, a purple, or the green like I did, or even adding some black into that green, all of those will drastically change the end result of this. And it's a very, very flexible and forgiving technique all in all. If you were doing this over an army, it's really, really efficient, like incredibly efficient. The two steps of the kind of precise edge highlighting really, really add up. And over a unit of 10 guys, you'll look down and think that someone spent hours on something rather than having dry brushed it, which is kind of what we're aiming for with the technique. So if you have any questions, pop them below. If you've got any suggestions for future content, pop those below as well. Please give the video a like, a comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in a future video.